Hello everybody, Lord for Life here bringing guys a brand new video and today we have a deck profile of Battle and Boxer. This is one of the three decks that got support out of Legendary Stool, Soul Burning Volcano I think is what it's called, and it's arguably still the worst. <laughs> actually I think it's objectively still the worst. I know some people would argue maybe Volcanics would be, but I think Volcanics actually has a better shot at being a solid rogue deck than Battle and Boxer. Because, and that's partly been seen in tournament results. Volcanics, I think, has a top here and there. Battle and Boxer has not had any. And Salmon Great's been doing pretty good. Unfortunately, the new support didn't do enough for Battle and Boxer, but it is still a pretty solid rogue deck. Um, it's definitely not like tier 3 or anything. This is more like a tier 4 or 5 deck. It's almost there. It just needs some consistency pieces and an archetypal rank up spell or something, but like it's so close. It hurts. <laughs> it really does. I have been working with this deck extensively trying to find a way to make it work and I have been really happy with my build. It's still not something I would take to a tournament. I did try. I got my butt whooped by Unchained, uh, Purely, and... Crap, what was the other big deck? Um, oh yeah, Rescue Ace. Rescue Ace was actually a pretty close match, but um, yeah, the other two, it wasn't even it wasn't even a joke close. <laughs> um, anyways, let's get on with the deck profile uh, and kind of talk about things as we go through. First and foremost, we do have three Promoter. Promoter is a really solid card. If your opponent has a monster, you can activate his effect in hand to special summon him. It is an activated effect. Your opponent can chain to it. It is not a just inherited special summon plop on the board thing like Cyber Dragon. Uh, you do have to declare it, which is a bit annoying because if they have a way to negate it, you lose your promoter. He does also have the effect to be able to tribute himself on the field, summon two more from deck, and then if he's in your graveyard, you can banish him to make it to where your uh, battle and boxes you control either gain or lose a level. This is really handy for if you want to play the rank 3 or if you want to hard make the rank 5. I don't really recommend either of those. It's not good to hard make the rank 5, uh, and it's not good to uh, even run the rank 3. So, generally speaking, right now his graveyard effect is just kind of there for situational purposes. But, really good card. You mainly use him for his summon effect and for his uh, lone fire effect to be able to combo off. Next up, we got our next three of. We got Battle and Boxer Switch. Uh, sorry, not Switch Hitter. <laughs> Uppercutter. Uh, Uppercutter is one of your big starters that you want to get to, usually off a of promoter or off of a different card. And this guy, on summon, searches for any Battle and Boxer monster or a. Uh, a uh, counter trap card and by that I mean a trap card with uh, a counter trap card with counter in the name of which there's only three solid targets and even one of those is like totally optional to play and then if he's sent to the graveyard by a card effect you can either special on a battle and boxer from your graveyard or set a counter trap card with well counter in the name and the problem is is that uh, you can't do both effects in a turn. He would be so much better if he was able to do both, and I'm sure, well, maybe not make the deck, like, tier or anything, or even, like, really high rogue, it would at least make the deck a lot more viable if you could do both effects. And I hate Konami for not letting me do both effects in one turn. I digress, though. This guy is still one of the best, like, openers in the deck and lets you combo off and make all sorts of fun plays. Uh, those are the only two that we play three of. I really wanted to prioritize consistency and playing a lot of hand traps and disruption in this deck. So I cut down the battle and boxer like name list as low as I could to be able to play as many consistency and hand traps. So let's move on. We do get two Battle and Boxer Chief second. I know this is a bit controversial. Some people argue you should play three. Some people argue you should play two. I'm sitting in the two camp right now. I have tested out three. It is really nice when you do open him and you have another uh, playmaker in hand. Like him plus uh, Uppercutter is really nice because you're just able to go full combo. And that's even not assuming you don't have anything else in hand to help you out with that combo. But it's just like you gotta have another name in hand, and since I'm not playing that many, it's like, okay, we, uh, it's not guaranteed it's gonna go off, so it's best to summon him off a of promoter, um, and then also along with, of course, good old uppercutter, and then get a search, and then get your extra normal summon off of that. 
fun stuff. Moving on, I do play two shadow as well. And this guy's really handy. You detach an exceeds material from a monster, special summon him from your hand. It doesn't like target or anything, so you just kind of declare you're doing it because it's an activated effect. Detach from anybody and special summon. Next, I got two sparer. This guy I've been playtesting two to three of. I really like three when you open multiples of this and it's turn one. Oh, good lord, you can just pop off. It is nice. So many rank four decks like kill to have a monster like this guy. The fact though that you lose your battle phase really sucks. And if you don't have another battle in boxer that's really solid, it just kind of it's not as good, especially if you only have one battle in boxer in hand and it's just like, uh, okay. Or if he's your by yourself, it's like, uh, okay. <laughs> it's like uh not as handy as I would like. We do have one glass jaw. Glass jaw is a card that's kind of easier main recursion piece. Um, I've know some people have taken him out of builds and stuff. I really like playing one of them mainly because. Again, you can recur your stuff, and that's really handy. I do play one switch hitter. Uh, switch hitter seems to be a one or two of from most builds I have seen. I'm playing one. I was testing two. I think one is much better because you aren't always... <laughs> Opening him and no one else sucks, and he's really good mainly on turn two to three as follow-up and all that fun stuff. Then I also do play one Counterpunch, and Counterpunch is a card that some people play, some people don't. I like playing one of them because sending him off at a rank 5 and setting him up in your graveyard, or sending him or adding him, it's just really good to be able to get over big beaters. This deck can have a really hard time getting over big beaters, so having Counterpunch to help out is always great. That's our battle and boxer lineup. Let's take a look at our hand traps. First and foremost, we got Triple Draw and Lockbird. Now, moving into the next format, this is made for the current ban list, but moving into the next format, this card is going to probably go into the side deck. I haven't fully decided yet. It doesn't do much against Unchained, so this will probably get switched with like Emperm or something. Uh, but however, that's even if I'm going to play this in the next format. <laughs> I digress though. Draw is, a, of course, like a mandatory three of in most decks right now that are trying to slow down the game. So, yeah. Then I got two uh, Veiler for negation, two Ash, and that's it for hand traps. Again, like I wanted to cut out as much as I could, and unfortunately there just isn't a huge amount of wiggle room. You could take out uh, Veiler for Imperm if you want to go that route. It's either or. I just happen to really like Effect Veiler, so. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. On to our spells. First and foremost, we got the biggest consistency boost to this deck. Three, uh, Infernoble Knight. Sorry, Infernoble Arms <laughs> Durandal. This card's really solid. You just equip it onto one of your dudes, search another dude, pop it. D not much more to it. Everybody knows what this card does. Then, for our next three of, is where we're going to get a bit spicy with this deck. That's three Seventh Ascension. This card... When you activate it, you take one rank up magic bear, uh, one ma rank up magic quick play, one Baryan spell or trap card, or one seventh one spell or trap card, and either add it to your hand or special or uh, set it. Uh, sorry, not set it. Put it on top of your deck. It does have another effect, but that card that effect is like super duper irrelevant. It never comes up. <laughs> uh, it is really nice though because it can come up where it can copy a rank up magic effect. So if like you gotta set it and you can't really use it, it's like, okay, you can just set it, let it get destroyed, and then use it in its effect in gra uh, Graveyard to copy a Rank Up Magic. Now, for a Rank Up Magic, I play two Rank Up Magic Baryons Force, and there's a reason why I'm playing this package in the deck. For one thing, it's for C79 uh, Nova Kaiser. Card is busted, especially when you get it with both effects. Um, <laughs> even when losing, my opponent was like, wait, well, how do I... Okay. <laughs> it, it's really annoying, and if your opponent doesn't have the Book of Moon or something to get rid of it, to, and uh, not even Book of Moon, Book of Eclipse, because Dempsey makes it untargetable, <coughs> um, it makes it really difficult for the opponent to run over. Now, looking at searchable rank-ups... There's really only two ways to go about it. There's the Utopia way, and then there's the Baryon way. The Utopia way, you use Sexual Connection, or I don't remember what it's called. It's You activate it, you reveal a card in your hand, you add a rank up, or you add a, one of the other like Utopia cards, and then you put the card you revealed on top of your deck or something like that. It's something weird. 
I don't like going neg, well, even. Actually, no, that is a neg, because you use the one card, you put one card on top, and you get one card. So yeah, it's a neg one in order to get any rank up magic. And there are better rank up magic. I, I would much rather play like Numeron's Force or something. But, can't exactly do that, because I don't want to have to <laughs> waste cards. <laughs> it's like, come on. So, I went with the Barian way, where I play 7th Ascension to be able to search out a rank up magic. And our options are literally either uh, rank up magic Barian's Chaos Force, or sorry, rank up magic Barian's Force, or pretty much rank up magic Quick Chaos. And I did test out one rank up magic Quick Chaos, and it's really nice for going for like uh, OTKs and stuff. But it just wasn't worth it, generally speaking. Especially since, like, yeah, it helps with OTKs and all that. But, generally speaking, I'd much rather be able to just go instantly straight into Nova Kaiser, uh, Chaos Knut Kaiser, blah, <laughs> by using this. You could go that route if you wanted to. It's down to you, like, totally speaking. Um, the nice thing with this card, though, specifically... And why I play it over the uh, Rank Up Magic Quick Play is because when you use this card to Xyz Summon, you get to steal one of your opponent's Xyz Materials if they have an Xyz Monster with Material out. So, <laughs> if you're playing against Purely or Cash Tira or any other uh, Xyz Focus deck, you get to steal one of their Materials and add it onto your Chaos Kaiser, which means Chaos Kaiser gets to do his effect just that much easier, which is always really nice. For consistency, I got two desires. I wish I had the money for um, freaking uh, prosperity, but nah, yeah, no thank you. Uh, speaking of wish I had money for, I'm playing two triple tactics uh, talents. I would play thrust if I had thrust, <laughs> if I had the money for thrust. So we're playing tactics ta uh, talents instead. This card's just stupid good for the deck and really handy. One Rota, obviously. One Battle and Box and Spirits. You mill the top card of your deck, target a Battle and Boxer in your graveyard, special summon it. Pretty self explanatory. And then for our two traps, I do play one Battle and Boxer, uh, one Battle and Boxing Cross Counter, and one Flanville Counter. Uh, these two cards are your main counter traps to search off of. Uppercutter. You can also play Jolt Counter if you wanted, but Jolt Counter is like a side card if you're going first and you expect your opponent to evenly you, because you can use Jolt Counter to stop the evenly, and then still have Flamville Counter to uh, follow up for main uh, main phase plays. Anyway, so what did these do? If you don't know, <laughs> Flamville Counter. Uh, when your opponent activates a spell or trap card or effect, I think if it's yeah. Uh, negate, negate the, no, it's just, yeah, it's just a card, not the effect. When your opponent activates a spell or trap card, banish a fire monster of 200 defense from your graveyard, negate it, destroy it. Uh, really, really good, especially considering that the card that searches this, uh, Uppercutter, <laughs> has 200 defense. It's like they made it on purpose. Really would have been nice if they could have reprinted this card in Soul Burning Volcano, because this card has two printings, and both are from, like, a decade ago. <laughs> Moving on, uh, Battle Unboxing... Battle and Boxing Cross Counter is the Monster Negate. Whenever your opponent activates a monster uh, effect, while well, you got a Battle and Boxer Xyz monster on field, negate it, destroy it, and destroy one of your Battle and Boxer Xyz's, and then you get to special summon a Battle and Boxer with a different name from your extra deck and use this card as its Xyz material. Uh, really good card all around. These two are great, and you can recycle them. You search them very easily. Uh, generally speaking, with Desires, you want to do your combos and everything, and then you want to Desires and everything, because banishing either one of these off of Desires sucks. So, yeah. Just trying to take some of the stuff I've learned from deck building in general into this deck. Moving on, let's take a look at our extra deck. First and foremost, we got two of the boy, the, the good boy, the original uh, <laughs> Battle and Boxer XC's monster. Battle and Boxer, lead the yoke. Anytime one of your Battle and Boxers would be destroyed, you detach material instead, and he gains 800 attack every time one of your every time one of his materials is detached. Since you get locked into Battle and Boxers so easily, you still have to play this card. Is he a good card? Eh, it's debatable. He's not as good as he used to be, but there are certain matchups where he's like a godsend. If you summon this guy against Unchained, they can't really destroy your stuff. <laughs> and so that makes it much harder for them to clear your board. So Lady Yoke is really good in that matchup, but there are some matchups where he's just not, he, he doesn't do anything. Like in the Castera matchup, oh no, I can't destroy him, banished. <laughs> it's like, okay, 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 yeah. 
Anyway, so yeah, that's why we still also play two King Dempsey. This card, even if you don't plan on playing Battle and Boxer, which why are you watching this video and why are you this far in? Um, but if you don't plan on playing Battle and Boxer, I still recommend picking up this card because this card's gonna go up eventually. This card is so stupid. It needs two level fours to go into, doesn't care what levels, what monsters they are, unlike that Yoku needs Battle and Boxer specifically. On Summon, you can take any Battle and Boxer spell or trap card or a Fire Warrior monster and either add it to your hand or send it to your graveyard. This card is stupid just off of that. On Summon, not even Exceed Summon, you can summon this guy, get his effect negated, like, and then, oh, hey, cool, next turn, Monster Reborn him back and get the search. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> On Summon. It's actually because of this that uh, we don't play three because you can just normal summon switch hitter next turn, bring him back, and then get another search. So it's really, really handy. He also has the bonus effect, uh, and I call it the bonus effect because it is a bonus effect, uh, to detach a material from anybody you control for effect, and, uh, well, basically make it to where all of your battle and boxers can't be targeted, which is really good and combos really well with the others because then you get targeting protection and battle and uh, battle or destruction protection. Then we got two number 79 battle and boxer uh, Nova Kaiser. This guy is really cool. Uh, you can, he doesn't have a detach effect. <laughs> he needs two level four monsters go into once a turn you can attach one battle and boxer from your i believe hand or graveyard uh yeah hand or grave but you never do it from hand you always do it from grave uh attach it to him he gets 100 attack for every battle and boxer attached to him and if he dies you can summon as many battle and boxers from your graveyard up to his materials so that's really neat and all, but he doesn't tend to stay on the field for very long because we're ranking him up into number C79, Battle and Boxer, uh, General Kaiser. This thing is the whole reason to play the deck. Like, not even a joke. This card is stupid. So, it needs three level fives to go into, but we're not doing that very much, if ever. We're ranking him up. There are times where you do have to hard make him, which is no fun, but hey, it does happen. Uh, whenever your opponent would summon a monster, you can detach two material to negate that summon. It's a hard once per turn, though, which does suck. But if you have C70, the original 79 on him, if a battle and boxer battles, God, that's a tongue twister. Uh, you get to send any battle and boxer from your hand or deck to the graveyard to basically take that monster that's battling your battle and boxer and attach it to this guy specifically as a material. And so this is really handy because uh, for one thing, if you're attacking, you get to redeclare the attack because it doesn't happen at that point where you don't get to redo the attack anymore. It does it before that. So you get to redeclare the attack and effectively clear two monsters out. Also, if you send like um, either glass jaw or uppercutter or uh, counter punch it's pure advantage because with glass jaw you'll get a recursion with uppercutter you'll get a recursion sending counter punch you can let one of your smaller guys like dempsey punch over something really good card all around very 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 powerful for the deck and if this deck ever does like it really good support like another wave th this card's gonna be a threat <laughs> Now, because we got so many ways to summon and also get locked into Battle and Boxer, we do have to play some of the not-so-good Battle and Boxers just to kind of round out the extra deck. Obviously, you don't really have to, but it's just generally good to because you're going to get locked into stuff super easy. I do play one number 105 Battle and Boxer Star Cestus. This guy is pretty cool. Whenever your battle and boxer uh, battles, you can detach material. Your battle and boxer can't be destroyed by that battle, and your opponent takes any damage instead. And the monster that is battling <laughs> gets its effect negated. It's like, okay, let's just pile on more and more effects on this thing. It does need three battle and boxers to make, which is really annoying. Um, actually, it needs. It doesn't need battle and boxer specifically. It needs. Three monsters. I'm sorry, I always thought it needed three battle and boxer. Anyways, uh, then I also do play his rank up counterpart because, hey, we already playing the rank ups, why not? This thing's a Focusaurus, and you can go into it and ma uh, during uh, time and stuff, burn something. I'm not even joking. It's a Focusaurus, and it's a freaking Fling Wing Man. So you can detach material, pop something, burn damage. You can run over something, burn for damage. It's just so stupid, and it's 2800 beat stick. Really cool card all around, but it's obviously... These guys, these guys are the worst ones outside of the rank 3. Uh, the rank 3 is objectively the worst. I see no reason to play it whatsoever, but I digress. Moving on for our non 
Bad on box or extra deck monsters. I do have one Abyss Dweller. This card's too good this format not to play, and it's gonna only get better next format because Unchained. <laughs> uh, lots of graveyard effects. And then we got one Divine Arsenal Double A Zeus Sky Thunder because this card's stupid in any rank uh, and in any Xyz focus deck. Uh, for a non uh, Xyz, we don't play a ton, at least not in this build. You could play uh, more. I do play one IP Mascarena along with the Unicorn to be able to do that combo. And then, because there are times where it does come up, <laughs> I do play uh, one Infinitrack Fortress Mega Clops. This thing is stupid and really handy for the deck as an alternative boss monster. You can turn out so many Xyz super easily. And then, oh hey, next turn, go into this guy and just kind of win the game if your opponent doesn't have the out to it. Uh, you can also play as old. As old isn't all that great in this build because you don't have um, enough equips to send off of her to be able to get her special summon effect. So I don't play her in this build. If you were to play more equips, you could play as old. But that's totally an option. Personally speaking, I don't think she's really worth it at the Infernoble build, I should say specifically. Because um, the Infernoble build... I, everything, every time I've tested it, it's just super, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Inconsistent. <laughs> uh, and I, I don't like it. So this is the build that I've come up with. What are your guys' thoughts and comments and everything? Let me know down below. I know it's been ages since I've uploaded. I, I have been very busy with work. It's not funny. <laughs> I, uh, I might explain one of these days. I don't know. It's it's just life and work and being an adult. I do want to get back into YouTubing, so I'm trying to like forcibly make time to do it. So, anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Rate, comment, and subscribe, and see y'all later. Peace out. Goodbye. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do consider rating, commenting, and subscribing. Sharing the video helps as well. If you especially really like it, please do consider being a channel member. Every little bit helps out. And hey, also why not check me out on my other social media pages. Thank you and have a great day.